during my career, we've looked at different aspects and we've tried to understand uh, how mouse models of disease relate to human disease and really be able to understand the molecular basis of these uh, pathways. For many decades, mice were really the uh, best um, forum to test hypotheses. Each of these inbred mouse strains were discovered to have different tendencies towards autoimmunity and features that look like human lupus. But I think equally people argue that they're very strange and very idiosyncratic. Now we're in this period where the uh, solution of the human genome has been accomplished and we're beginning to scan uh, the genes and genetic inheritance in large groups of individuals and particularly individuals with lupus. And we're seeing that in some cases very similar genes and pathways are involved but in other cases they may not be. There are clusters of genes and what, even if there are different genes that might be identified in different groups and different individuals, what we try to see is common pathways where the same gene may be at above the next gene and then there's triggers that goes all the way down, it turns out that there actually is a single genetic factor that was discovered decades ago where if you have a defect in both of your chromosomes, you have greater than a 90% chance of developing lupus. Now that by contrast, you know, these uh, almost uh, two dozen genes that have been found in these genome-wide scans, each of them has a contribution where as opposed to a relative risk in the general population of let's say one, you might have only an increased tendency of 20%. So they're relatively minor contributors. What I was talking about is C1Q deficiency. It has to do with the complement system. It was discovered decades ago. And the reason why it doesn't come up in these genome-wide scans, I think, is because very often it may well be lethal. And uh, it is so uh, important for the immune system and regulation of the immune system that people who inherit these defects often develop lupus as children. So there's greater than a 90% chance of developing something that, that uh, associated with systemic uh, lupus like syndrome, kidney disease, skin disease, and I think it's very instructive and we're revisiting these uh, observations and trying to understand it from a different perspective, uh, how it results in predisposition and how it actually may drive uh, dysfunction in the immune system relating to autoimmunity. People may not appreciate this, but we all make antibodies, and particularly IgM antibodies, from birth. We're born with a full complement of IgM antibodies. And, you know, uh, maternal antibodies, IgG, come from your mom, they cross the placenta. But somehow or another, our immune system is primed in making antibodies from the very beginning. And you'd wonder, how does that make sense? What are the antigens driving it? Because you, you, we are born from a sterile womb. and. Uh, the thing that was also most intriguing is that there have been different uh, data that have been presented that suggest that everybody may inherit very similar antibodies and develop antibodies early in life. And so what we've done is looked at them from a different perspective, and it relates to what I was speaking to about before about uh, C1Q and complement. We actually think that many of these antibodies are protective. They protect us from infections, but they actually may protect us from uh, uncontrolled inflammatory responses, and they seem to work with C1Q to, in fact, be able to identify cells within our body that are dying, and, and even after development, just to remodel our bodies and maintain our vitality and be able to go through life, some of our cells become damaged and they need to be replaced. And the point is that cells that are damaged, if they're not taken care of the right way, they'll release what we call autoantigens. And autoantigens, if they're immunologically recognized, can result in the development of autoantibodies and can drive diseases like lupus. So actually we're born with antibodies that we believe are sort of the janitors of the body and they help to remove these dead and dying antibodies. They take them out in a nice clean spick and span fashion and they remove the autoantigens. So we're learning about a level of immune regulation and what we call homeostasis, keeping the right balance with the immune system. And this may be one of the major factors uh, why most people don't get autoimmune diseases. And if we can better understand these pathways, maybe we can actually uh, understand the blueprint and then design our own synthetic variants. And it may be a way of taking something natural and augmenting it.